So I'm here at Ignite 2016 in Atlanta and I'm at the Microsoft booth with uh, Dan Lovinger. I hope that's correct. Uh, Dan, you are a principal developer and working on Storage Spaces Direct, one of my really favorites. And I was in a session yesterday where uh, this project Kepler 47 was mentioned and I, th I thought this is so great, I have to do an interview with you about it. So um, then please tell us, um, what, what do we see here? What is this? So this is a two node proof of concept cluster that we've built with a level of hardware that's less expensive than we state requirements for for server 2016 GA. This lets us get to a cost point that we think is going to be kind of interesting as an exemplar, a proof point for some of our partners, some of our customers, and what, do, what can we do to support workloads at the edge in the back office, remote office type situation. What we're seeing here are, is basically a build that we put together off of the internet, you know, your new egg or Amazon. This is a simple eight node, or eight bay server chassis that we got for 200 bucks. It has a commodity motherboard in there for $200. It has plain SATA for the storage connectivity, which is a relaxation of the requirement we have at server 2016 GA for a host bus adapter yeah. so that we can do things like slot identification, you know, tell you that slot five has the failed drive, replace it, blink a light on the front. But you can't do that here, of course. Yeah, we can't do that here, but it turns out that there are other ways we could adapt to that. And we're showing this with intent. We think this is a possible thing. Yeah. With Intel Thunderbolt 3, we're relaxing the requirement for a high speed traditional, possibly RDMA enabled NIC in the back. With Thunderbolt 3, I receive a 20 gigabit virtual network interface of the operating system, That's huge. which gives me over a gigabyte a second of transfer connectivity between the nodes for doing things like Hyper-V Live migration, storage rebuild, without that being in any way a bottleneck. And if you think about you know, what it takes to right size a system, we think this is kind of interesting. Yeah. You, you mentioned there's also an Intel E3, so uh, a small Xeon processor in there, and uh, I think 16 gigabits in e, uh, 32 or? Uh, 30, 32 gigabytes of memory in each node. Uh, it turn, this is E3 uh, E3 V5, it's the E3 1235L processor. It's a 25 watt Skylake Xeon processor. It's a tiny little thing, yeah. but it's enough. That processor actually supports 64 gigabytes. You know, in here I just have a generic off the internet motherboard that has eight SATA ports so I can plug up my eight bays here. But if an OEM likes this idea, they could easily build a board that has 64 gigabytes of memory yeah. support on it. They could take the Thunderbolt part. If we, you know, if we cut around and take a look at the back a little bit later, yeah. I can show you how my Thunderbolt's in there. I've got a PCIe card. If they put that Thunderbolt controller on the motherboard, all of a sudden this you know, build starts to compress and constrict and start to right size its way around an appropriate workload. So a question that pops in mind, of course, and you, you said that in the presentation, so it's already public. What would such a setup roughly cost? So I was able to put this together before putting the drives in the front, and you can put whatever drives you like in the front, it's just SATA, yeah. for about $1,100 per system. Per system, so for around $2,200, you have the systems with the uh, a Thunderbolt connection, that's all you need for your traffic between this, the systems, and then you add the disks you like. Uh, if you want SSDs, it's SATA, you can do that. If you want spindles, you can do that. Yeah. So um, this actually is a hyper-converged setup, right? And this is not a proof of concept. You have now a two-node setup in uh, Storage Spaces Direct, right? Right, with Server 2016, right now, you can go to any of our partner booths, and we have a few around us here on the show floor, and you can find and walk out of here you could walk out of here with a two node setup today. Yeah. That's not the proof of concept. The proof of concept is getting it to this form factor. This is still an HA compute, HA storage, yeah. hyper-converged, 
storage and compute cluster, fully functional, just like anything else on the show floor, but in a leading form factor that you know, points toward how small this could get going forward. Um, and you use the Thunderball, it's a fully network connection, so you use it to, um, to do the, the, the mirroring of the disk. This is, of course, a mirror setup because uh, you can only do mirroring with two nodes. We can't do uh, erasure encoding or something. To be clear, you need at least four nodes for that. But you do the mirroring over Thunderball and also live migration, right? So you can move virtual machines from this node to this node. Yep. And it advertises in the operating system as 20 gigabits. Yeah. I mean, think about that. If you, if you go to the Intel site, they will sell you a chip for doing Thunderbolt 3 for less than $9 on each side. And if you, which, and you know, this isn't to say anything against you know, our classic NICs, our RDMA NICs, we love them. We love them for the high scale environments that absolutely require them. What we're talking about here are environments that you know, simply can't reach that level of requirement. They don't, they don't need something that fast. They don't you know, need the high speed, super optimized communication. But Thunderbolt actually turns out to be pretty efficient. It's a DMA engine on both sides. It actually slots in between the efficiency of an RDMA NIC and a classic TCP NIC. We've seen it live and it's, it's fully functional. So I take my camera now and uh, we do a cut here and you explain a little bit the backside and maybe we can look at the, at the system from failover clustering here. So maybe you show us a move or something. So then, then please show us a little bit of the back of the system. Okay, so what we're looking at here, uh, here's, our, here's our motherboard. This is our standard mini ITX workstation motherboard. As you can see, we've got you know, evidence of that. I have optical audio, I have lots of other connectors that we would never imagine putting in a real server class system. Proof of concept. But here's what we get, here's where it gets interesting. This is Thunderbolt 3. This is a development board that Intel gave us for the proof of concept. We have two ports of USB type C, uh, these are Thunderbolt. We have ex two extra display port ports which really don't come into the picture at all. But this is a gigabyte a second of connectivity between the nodes. Right here. That's great. So then what, what are we looking at? So this is our cluster, as you probably saw in the, just, just before we had, we do have an HDMI cable running out. This is our display hooked right up into one of those nodes. And here's our cluster. If you're familiar with our failover cluster manager, here's our cluster, Ignite TBT. We're running with a cloud witness. You can see hooked up here, this is a little object up in the Azure cloud. It gives us our third boat tie break to make the two node cluster reliable. On this cluster, we have 12 VMs running right now. Wow. You think about what's, it, this is already getting to be a relatively large installation. Small VMs, but what do you need to run a basic set of infrastructure services in a highly available way? Maybe this starts to work. Here is our storage spaces direct pool. This is how storage spaces direct shows up in the system. As you can see here, we have four SSDs in the pool. These are our cache devices, two per node, SATA SSDs, and six capacity four terabyte hard drives. So we actually have 48 terabytes raw and about 20 terabytes once we do the two-way mirroring and leave a little bit of storage aside for regeneration and rebuild. That's great which is a tremendous amount of storage when you really think, start to think about it. Over here, you can see our processor. It's just plain old task manager. This is the E3-1235L. This is a 25-watt Intel Skylake Xeon processor. Still very capable processor. When you talk about a basic set of VMs providing basic infrastructure services, this could work. But like lots of other things in this build, some things could get larger. Put a larger processor in there, some things can get smaller. How much storage do you actually need? It's a pointer toward what this could look like. Down here, down here toward the bottom, you can actually see how Thunderbolt shows up in the operating system. Right here, it's a virtual, whoop. Okay, that will cut that. 
This is how it shows up in the operating system. This is our Thunderbolt networking 20 gigabit virtual NIC right. that we have for the cluster communication. So now I have to be, uh, I'm very interested, I saw you deployed a little bit of the VM fleet, a tool that you are heavily involved, a great yeah. tool by the way. So what are the numbers? I have to ask you because you have flash in there and you have, uh, are you comfortable to, to because it's a, it's a, a very not expensive, I wouldn't say cheap, yeah. it's a cheap setup, but what are the numbers? What are the numbers? That's an excellent question. Yeah. We can go set that up. It might take me a minute. Okay. Okay. And I guess they are in pause mode, right? Yep. It depends on how big the I.O. is, right? Yep, so if we look at where our VMs are right now, let's just double check that. Uh, these are the VMs that are running right now. So we have yep, three on UNAS 1 and three on UNAS 2. Yeah. Let's see, we have, and so it, 200 IOPS, so I'm just gonna do the math here to make sure I don't get it wrong times six VMs that are participating, about 1,200 IOPS. And you see that we're just about achieving that. You know, there's a little, yeah. bit of, little bit of back and forth, but we're basically achieving yeah. 1,200 IOPS easily. We could try to increase that. And you said a storage cost policy yep. to limit the IO a VM can do. So we set it yep. on 200, yep. and we reached 200 with the system. Yep. For six VMs, that's great. Yep, so now we can try to double it to 400. But you know, really, when we think about what we're building these type of system for, we're not building it for the high scale. This is not going to be the. Whoops. Oh, you got the name uh, of the. Yeah, I think we need to say it that way. What's the name? Was Ignite Cross, right? Sorry. Yep. And now we should see this jump into the range of 2400 pretty quickly. Oh, that's great. And there we have Quas 2400 IOPS on two tiny two node clusters. That's really great. I, I like it a lot. And this is um, the thing for a lab, if you want to, uh, the problem is with storage spaces direct. You need quite expensive hardware if you want to do a four node thing that can do everything like uh, the erasure coding and so on. Mm -hmm. So here you have a two node system, that's great. Now imagine you can, could do a four node system. I don't know if there is a Thunderbolt hub or something like that. Intel tells us we could go to three nodes yeah. with this. We could put Thunderbolt in a three node ring. Yeah. But re realistically, we, we suspect, it, it, to be proven, this is just a proof of concept. Yeah, of course. That by the time we get to four nodes and five nodes, there are probably other requirements that are coming into play yeah. that might point towards a more classical, higher-end, rack-scale hardware. Of course. But we, th I, but we think this has a chance to slot in nicely to serve a lot of use cases that might not be easily filled by that so, type of hardware. So then this is really great proof of concept. I like it a lot. Um, and um, I hope it, uh, Intel will will provide the Thunderbolt driver to the Windows deck, so you can do really nice things. With it.